Good morning, Geometry Honors students. So today I would like to talk about sections 1.3. So the objectives for the lesson today, so recognizing linear and nonlinear points. Uh, number two, triangle inequality. We'll get to that. Number three, supplementary and complementary angles. So definitions of collinear. So that means uh, collinear, that means all points are lying on the same line. So anytime they see the point lying on the same line, they always consider it collinear. So for example, like this right here, this diagram. So all points right here, A, B, and C, they're all lining on the same line. And also things like AC, so lying on that line, AC, DB, so those are collinear. Okay? So anytime they see all those points, they're on the same line, they always consider it collinear. Triangle inequality, so triangle inequality, let's say we do have a triangle, so A, B, and C. So A, which is considered the shortest leg of the triangle, and B is the medium leg, and C is the longest leg. So the sum of the length of any two sides of A triangle must be greater than the length of the third side. So for example, like A plus B, the sum of those two segments, so it must be greater than side C. And then number two, A plus C, so the shortest leg, with the longest leg. So once you combine them, obviously it's going to be greater than the medium leg. And then also number three, B plus C. So once you combine them, it's always greater than A. So there's another way that I can come up with the exact same kind of triangle inequality theorem. So the way to do it, it's consider A minus B, absolute value, which is less than C, and it's less than absolute value of A plus B. So basically this one is just like giving you the exact same kind of inequality. So you try to undo it, you're going to come up with the exact same compound inequality. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have for this. So this one, <clears throat> so it's a triangle, so we can do it with either one of those approaches. So let's start it with the triangle inequality. With that A plus B, it's greater than C, and then a plus C is greater than B, and then the other one's B plus C is greater than A. So what we find out here, so A is 7, so B is 9. So in order to find out the possible value for C, so what we can do, so let's just apply that the first inequality. So A plus B, so 7 plus 9, which is greater than C, so 16 is greater than C. And also, using that, the second one, the second inequality, so A plus C, so A, which is 7, so 7 plus C, it's greater than B, so that means C must be greater than 9 minus 7, then that'd be 2. And let's check out the third inequality, so B plus C, so 9 plus C, it's greater than A, so 9 plus C, it's greater than 7. So that means C must be greater than negative 2. But the thing is that <clears throat> the side length cannot be negative number. It must be positive number. So the positive value, so we got this. So put them all together, so C is right between 2 and 16. So the easy way for doing that would be the absolute value one. So absolute value of A minus B is less than C. It's less than absolute value of A plus B. So plug in the number, so 7 minus 9 with absolute value. So this one will give you negative 2, absolute value of negative 2, then that will be positive 2. And then the other part of the inequality, so A plus B, so 7 plus 9, which is what, 16, so it's less than 16. So C is bounded in between 2 and 16. So it must be greater than 2, but it's got to be less than 16. So that will give you the minimum and the maximum. Okay, so now let's find out the next example here. So given that's A equals 7, C equals 9, find the minimum maximum value of B. So pretty much the same kind of idea. So instead of using that A minus B, so it can just say that it's um, A minus C, absolute value. It's less than B, it's less than absolute value of A plus C. So subtract, so 7 minus 9, so we got negative 2. So absolute value, well let's just plug in the number showing the 
it's very important for you to show the work even you can do it mentally so after the setup the formula and then we plug in the number so a plus c so 7 plus 9 so this one will give you 2 is less than b and b is less than 16 supplementary complementary angle I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar with this so supplementary angle that means angle 1 and 2 once you combine them it's always adding up to 180 complementary that means the sum of two angle once you combine them then that'll be 90 degree okay so L1 plus L2 equals 180 degree L1 plus L2 for the complementary angle it's always 90 degree So vertical angle, so vertical angle that means angle facing to each other with the exact same measurements like angle 1 it's congruent to angle 3 so they're facing toward each other so that means they do have the exact same measurement angle 2, angle 4 also you know they're facing toward each other so that means they do have the exact same measurement so here's another example so we do have angle ABD, angle DBC and this one, the measurements, the expression is being shown that is 4x, 1x. So as you can see that this one is just combined it as a straight angle. So that means those two angles got to be supplementary. So what we can start with is 4x plus x equals 180. So combine that 4x and 1x, so we got 5x. So that equals 180 divided by 5. So we got x equals 36. Okay, so just solve for x first. And then don't forget, we're not just solving for x, we need to find out the measure of angle ABD. So angle ABD, so plug in the number 36 times 4, or 4 times 36. So what we got here 6 times 4, 24, 3 times 4, 12, plus 2, 144. Okay, so here's another one. So what we got here, so we do have two lines cross each other. So angle one, angle two, as you can see that they're considered supplementary angle. And angle one and three, they're facing toward each other. So that means angle one is the same as angle three. So by using the geometric concept, so what we can do, we can set up that the algebraic equation. So angle one, angle two, so that means three x plus 10, plus three y plus 10, so combine them together, so then that'll be 180. And then angle 1, angle 3, since they're equal, so that means 3x plus 10 is the same as x plus 2y. So you might be wondering, this one is kind of like the system equation. It is. So what we can do, we can just set it up like a linear system, the standard form. So the standard form of a linear equation is always ax plus by equals c. So the standard form of a line. So for the first equation, so let's just bring the variable together. So we got 3x plus 3y. So subtract 10 twice on both sides. So subtract 20. So we do have 180 minus 20, which is 160. So that's the first equation. And then the second equation, subtract x both sides. Subtract 2y at the same time. And also subtract 10 because we want to get this one back to the standard form of a line. So 3x minus x, which is 2x, and then minus 2y. So 10 minus 10 got canceled. So what's left here on the right-hand side is just negative 10. And then the rest of this, we can use the elimination technique to solve for x and y. So find the least common multiples of 3 and 2, which is 6. So multiply the first equation by 2. And then multiply the second equation by 3. So what we found here, so we got 6x, 2 times 3y, 6y. So that equals 2 times 160, which is 320. And then the rest of this, the second equation, so we got 6x minus 6y. And then 3 times negative 10, then that'll be negative 30. So basically, this two equation here, we can combine them. So once you combine them, so this one 6x plus 6x, then that'll be 12x. 
6y plus negative 6y got canceled. 320 plus negative 30, then that would be 290. And then divided by 12. So it looks like this one is not divisible. If this one is not divisible, that means we want to reduce. So by 2, top and the bottom. So let's see what that is. So this one will get... Okay, 145. And then the other one is over 6. So try to reduce that again, so it looks like it doesn't work. So just leave the answer like this, improper fractions. So x equals 145 over 6. To solve for y, we just need to plug in a number back to one of the equation. Okay, so the equation that looks easier, then that'll be equation number 2. So plug in a number back there, so we do have 2 times 145 over 6 minus 2y. So that equals negative 10. Well, the other way that I can simplify it, you can divide it by 2 first. So divided by 2, we got 145 over 6 minus y equals negative 5. Okay, so this one basically just swap those terms. So y equals 145 over 6 plus 5. Okay, so find the least common denominator and just combine those numbers together. So y equals 145 over 6 plus 30 over 6. So combine them, so then that would be considered 175 over 6. Okay, so they're not considered a nice number, but the thing is that always using system equation, elimination or substitution to solve for x and y. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have for the rest of this. That's it for the first part of 1.3. So there's another uh, part of the video for 1.3. We'll talk about that. It's about uh, finding the distance, midpoint, and also using the Pythagorean theorem. So just stay tuned. So I'll see you guys next time. And don't forget, if you guys do like the channel, please subscribe it. Okay, so I'll see you guys next time.